Beautiful people, welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Vince Stone, joined every week by Jill Brent. We were just talking about the many flavors of artificial sweetening, non-sweetening, yeah. <laughs> grape drink, banana flavors. Oh, you can't imagine. Ew. Hey, it's all going to be there for the live and uncut version of the show. If you want that, <laughs> hey, it takes us like an hour to make these shows. Most of it doesn't make it to the final cut. Go ahead and grab that if you're one of our beautiful party patrons. I got some good news, everybody. For what me, that? for our old timers. <laughs> Something that gave me a little warm feel. I was in here um, editing on Sunday. Doing Linux Gamecast. You know, it's a, I don't want to call it a slog, but I mean, it's work work. I'm getting that done. And I get a little email notification. And I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. What's going on? Check my message. I'm like, your post is on Slashdot. I'm like, Yay, what post? Oh, nice. Nice. Uh, I went over to Slashdot and I'm like, hey, look, my interfacing Linux thing on the Trackberry Pi, the Raspberry Pi. And I'm like, oh, that's great. That's, you know, I would have been a lot more. You might not even know what Slashdot is. It was the business, you know, early 2000s. That was like yeah, the tech site that you went to. There wasn't <laughs> a whole lot in the way of competition. Back in the day when Tom's hardware was Tom at his house playing with stuff he found in his basement. Yeah. And we had the Fresh Meat software repository. It was good to see. So, uh, yeah, interfacing Linux got slash dotted for whatever. <laughs> there, there was a time when that would have been a dangerous thing, but uh, yeah, That's not wonderful. too much to worry about. Also, got to play around with that 2.5 gig transceiver with a RAS, but uh, that, mm, stay tuned. Stay tuned. Keep following that on the YouTube channel and what I got posted. But, uh, oh yeah, quick note, if you want to do some Trackmania RPG, I'm going to be doing that. It's open for everybody. Nice. Mm -hmm. No, RPG, racing game? Not really. We keep telling you this is not a racing game. It's yeah. not. It's a <laughs> physics platformer. This is like American Ninja Warrior, you know, where they put all the stuff in the way. You remember American Gladiators, where you got to go through the obstacle course? Mm -hmm. This is kind of like that on a grander scale. And you can get in, there's a post on interfacing Linux in the forums, Trackmania 2 RPG, look it up, get the game, the game's cheap, it's like nine bucks, it's usually on sale for like $2.99, you might even have a copy in your library. Get everything set up, join us, uh, it'll probably be about 8.45 p.m. Eastern, there's enough friction there, so we don't have to worry about like randos coming in, because you know we live stream this, and that's mm -hmm. the big thing, that's the reason mm -hmm. you need to be a Twitch sub or a patron, to keep that out, because... Every time we've taken that off, it's ended predictably every single time. So, uh, but there's enough overhead to get into that. So we're not going to have to worry about randos and unless you're thinking about being the funny person. I'll nuke you from orbit. Just remember that. <laughs> yeah. Looking forward to it. Joe Bryant, uh, what's Aww. new? You uh, were able to join us yesterday when we were doing the Halloween extravaganza. Yeah, that was fun. I really like those tracks. They weren't all full speed. It was kind of nice. To have a, a new mix in there and but i like i like the halloween tracks they were very well done all right before we jump into it i want to go ahead and cover this this broke right before i hit yes. go live when app has deleted <laughs> their entire github source code repo after a rocky few weeks yeah they did uh they, this is going to be on ours technica everything's going to be in our show notes if you know what's going on like, leave me a comment under the video because don't nobody know what's going on right now. Because when they first released it, the biggest thing that everybody pointed out, after they found out that there's like, there's code in there that should not be uh, open source, it's not licensed for it, followed by the um, OneNet project going, you cannot fork this code, that would be wrong. And of course, you know, immediately what happened, the repo's gone, 404 right now. Like, this, they just pulled it. Nobody knows what's going on which is wild. I wanted to give that just a quick mention. You know, they tried, I guess, like in some weird way to, uh, yeah, it had the shoutcast code in it. And um, yeah, if you try to pull it up, it's just not there. Huh. <laughs> Fascinating. I, listen, I'm just curious. I'm just being nosy about this because I don't just the idea of a desktop audio player is such a foreign concept to me in 2024. Mm -hmm. But I know some people still use it, and you know people use yeah. you know whatever. I, I'm using Audacious right now Audacious, for the show. Audacious, yeah. I keep that around. I'm sure some people are still using like Amarok or XMMS. Or all, the list, you know, because what people yeah. just heard. 
They didn't hear what I said. What they heard, Jill, was, I want to know what audio player that you use, because that's what yeah, they're going to be typing. XMMS. Yeah, yeah they, they didn't hear what I said. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Maybe next week we'll know what happened. Maybe, you know, I kind of got a feeling that they put this out there with, you know, the best intent of like, here's what we could put out, you know, have a look at it and do all that. And they're, it quickly became the, um, this ain't worth this hassle. Like, whatever, go away. But let's get into mm-hmm. the show proper with okay. uh, something. You know, I don't have cool. a screenshot because just about every one of my Android devices I've learned over the years to keep it. I rarely use it. And that's a terminal mm-hmm. application. Why? Because if I'm on a terminal on an Android device, I have royally screwed up something. Yeah. Something is what <laughs> there's, a, there's a very bizarre set of circumstances that leads me to have a terminal emulator open on an Android device. But in that case, uh, that does show up. You might just be able to crack open the one that's built in. Yeah. Yeah. So. Google is actually going to enable the running of Linux apps on Android, just like they do with Chrome OS. Currently, Android's terminal app still requires you to manually configure the Linux VM by providing a Debian image and creating a VM underscore config.json file. But Google plans to upgrade the terminal app to take care of all that for you. Yeah, this is just really Really cool. And, you know, Google has been moving to make Chrome OS like Android for quite some time. So it makes sense that they would enable Linux apps to run on Android. This is not only great for the end user, but for developers who can run the Linux apps they need on Android like they do on Chrome OS. This is like trying to bring Android uh, more like feature parity with Chrome OS. Yeah. You know, if you have Chrome OS, exactly. you're like, oh, yeah, 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 all right, because it's using the um, AVF, the Android of Virtualization uh, Framework to run yeah. a Debian virtual machine, which is neat. That's good. It's just that next step, just a little bit closer to being able to carry around your portable Linux computer, as long as we all forget yes. about Fuchsia, because that doesn't exist. I know. Right? Yeah, that was supposed to be a thing, but... <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, being able to run like a fully featured Debian VM, that'd be neat. Who remembers yes. KVM <laughs> switches? Oh, oh, I we still use them. <laughs> used to have them laying around. Um, <laughs> You know, if you might have like a retro system with like a hardware KVM switch. Yep. These I have days. lots of those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I got one in the closet. I just, I was just thinking, I'm like, you forgot to get the prop then. I'm like, yeah, I did. Hang mm-hmm. it in there. Uh, keyboard, video, and mouse. We've just kind of, we, we don't worry about the uh, video anymore. Why? Because monitors are cheap. Used to be back in the days. Yes. You had a monitor, <laughs> man. And it was really dope to be able to hook up multiple computers. To that one very expensive monitor and one keyboard and one mouse and you can usually you know there'd be a button on the device or if you had a really fancy one i got a really fancy one just casually tossed in the top uh, it would work with the keyboard shortcut and you're like oh yeah. i could that that's old school that's a, that's retro hardware these days these days you do it all in software and it's super quick i've talked about this on the show barrier mm-hmm. barrier is a great piece of software i use everywhere in the studio these two pcs are connected and this pc over here is connected that one other it doesn't have a monitor on it's connected like anytime i got to deal with um something that's going to be plugged into the network barrier goes on it because the, the idea i am I, I could just get cross when i have to go dig out the crash cart keyboard and mouse mainly because that mouse has got a dead micro switch on it that it does double click mm. and i refuse to fix mm. it because i'm lazy <laughs> that's beside the point this saves me from that because i plug it in put it on the network i got thread booper open i can you know you can set it up to just seamlessly drag not even drag but move your mouse in between i set it up with hotkeys you know alt uh, f1 through alt f5 in the studio changes different boxes if i hit alt f2 uh, there we go oh nice i'm over here on thread booper <laughs> right now i, I, I got, got a mouse a on top of me yeah <laughs> mouse cursor <laughs> and uh alt f1 and like it is real time too it's not like you're waiting for anything like you could play in a first person shooter with that problem is problem is uh you know barrier it was the open source kvm solution it's been around forever not ever but mm-hmm. you know if you've been looking for this you've ran across it you have it installed it's what comes with debian and most other distributions I mean, it was forked from synergy then synergy kind of went like full-on commercial and they're like 
and it started trying to do a lot of other stuff. So a bunch of people from the Synergy Project were like, let's just keep this really useful feature and uh, kind of fork it. That's how Barrier came into being. And a couple of years ago, about three, the repo owner for Barrier, the guy maintaining it, he's like, yeah, I'm bored with this. I won't do it anymore, which is cool. I mean, that happens. A couple of the active maintainers were like, we want to keep working on this. And uh, so he's like, yeah, just fork it. Do, do the beautiful thing that you can do with open source code. And that's what they did. And they started work on something called Input Leap, which is Yay. Barrier, but it's called Input Leap. But it does some other things too. Um, I've been waiting for this to come out for a while. It's been in development, but this week, or late last week, they released their first sets of packages that you can go download. And they have all the stuff that you would expect from like Debian, Fedora, Mac, Windows, you know, they got it available for ARM version 302. And that's really what you consider to be their first official release. Uh, really glad to see it. Now, Wayland support is what a lot of people have been sitting waiting on because they knew Barrier stopped development. Yeah. And now, you know, Wayland has grown, grown from like seven people to like at least 20 to 23 people using it. So they are, mm-hmm. some, somebody's going to miss that joke, I guarantee you. They were just <laughs> paused it and they're writing a very angry YouTube comment right now to give me the business. Uh, <laughs> uh, so you need that Wayland support for why? Because, you know, keyboard shortcut and copy and paste clipboards and all these other things that you would normally expect to do. And Wayland's like, no, I'm secure or something like that. So you can use it, uh, but you can't use it with a clipboard. It'll work with Wayland. Just your copy and paste is not going to work. Yeah. Let's talk about uh, birds. I'm just going to say, OMG and Ubuntu, you're, see, I'm looking at this. <laughs> I went to the web zone and I'm like, that's a yeah. lot of bird, man. Usually they got like, uh, you know, a line drawing. So I scroll down. I'm like, oh, there it is. There, right. it, is. there it is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> hmm. It's a songbird. <laughs> In fact, an Oriole. <laughs> so Ubuntu turns 20 years old with the release of Ubuntu 24.10 Oracular Oriole. And to honor Ubuntu 4.10 Wardy Warthog, the first Ubuntu release from 20 years ago, the original startup sound is being played on login on Ubuntu 24.10. And there is a brown accent color and a new version of the first ever Ubuntu wallpaper. And... Personally, when I was hearing the original startup sound with the long synth sweep and high-pitched tings on first boot, it gave me geek chills. I'm like, I wasn't expecting that because I, I purposely didn't read all the reviews beforehand when I tested the distro. And I'm glad I did it because <laughs> I heard the startup sound and made me very happy. And it's not the one that most people know from Ubuntu. The, the, the one that people know is kind of like a, a, a drum sound that goes really fast and, and it, it, it doesn't last too long. But this is a long, you know, musical sweep with high-pitched tings. And it's, it's really awesome. This release includes many improvements to the use and management of Snap containerized applications for you know, greater fine grain control yeah, and security I'm, I'm for at snap right now. And permissions. I'm like, did they make it a yeah. little bit easier to uh, get rid of the Firefox snap so you can install regular Firefox? <laughs> no, no. Oh, but they didn't. They've, okay. They, they've made uh, uh, snaps uh, a, a lot more secure to use. And that's what their goal has been to do is to, to make them very secure. And... I thought it was just get on people's nerves. <laughs> no. <laughs> In fact, um, there is a new security center that lets you enable Snap app prompting and Snap app updates are now indicated on the Ubuntu dock. Also, Ubuntu 24.10 uses Wayland as default now for users with NVIDIA GPUs and uses the open source NVIDIA 560 kernel drivers where supported. So that, that's so huge we're get news. a bunch of people going, man, this don't quite work right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There, there's still some, obviously, some issues with Nvidia and Wayland, but oh, there is. they, they, <laughs> they, they felt comfortable so. enough to to release it. But if you don't want to use uh, Wayland, you can go back to the login sc- screen and easily quick to Xorg. So no problems there. X11. 
I'm glad you got a new release out. If you use Ubuntu, yeah. you're super cool. We don't have a problem with it. Now you got a bird as your desktop wallpaper. It's great. Yeah. And, uh, there it is. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Being the old throwback, man, the retro, the uh, purple and brown look. Yeah. I, I, I really appreciate that. Yeah. I got love for Ubuntu. I do. I, I give everything yeah. a little bit of static. Why? Because, you know, I'm, I, I don't fan out about anything. I'm not going to defend something blindly. Not going to mm-hmm. happen. But back in the day, when I was setting things up, man, Ubuntu was like yeah. cutting edge. Easy to install. With, um, Great install. Getting UEFI stuff set up. And that worked on a system here in the studio where Fedora didn't work. Debian didn't work. Susie didn't work. But you know what? Yep. The Ubuntu got the job done. So I'm glad it's still kicking. And again, you're going to run into problems. Uh, I'm not joking with you. Don't run Steam in a snap. Stop. Don't, don't participate yeah. in Canonical's <laughs> science experiment. Valve doesn't like it. I don't like Steam in a flat pack either. This is not me hating on Snap. This is just like, don't. You do. <laughs> do you. Uh, you got NVIDIA Wayland? It kind of works for the most part. There's all these edge yeah. cases. Not so much with NVIDIA so much. Uh, NVIDIA's doing what NVIDIA does. Like They're not ever going to change. Wayland's still got all these like these little things you know might be death by a thousand cuts but go try it out and like jill said you got to fall back for x11 yeah rock sure and do. roll all <laughs> right uh up next i've been saying i've been playing around with a bunch of things and a couple of those have been embedded systems you know socs you know raspberry pies and uh, banana pies and yeah all these other things well, i've been very interested in researching sd card backup technology <laughs> yes <laughs> you got to you got to i mean unless unless you're doing it you're like i need something to fill my time then boy you can me i'm on the other end of that spectrum i'm like i need to get as much done in the least amount of time as possible and the easiest way to back up an sd card micro sd card because that's standard lot you know in your raspberry pies your banana pies your rock whatever's uh is just use dd you know, you mm-hmm. plug it in DD and you've used DD to copy a disk before. It's just a bit perfect image. It's like everything that's on there. And the problem with DD, as we all know, is if I got a, <laughs> I'm just, I'm going to stick with SD cards, for example, here, because you need to get your head around. <laughs> Let's say I got a 64 gig SD card and I got a copy of Debian or Raspbian installed on it. So I'm like, it's got like three gigs of information. I DD that, that image. Now I have a 64 gig image because it doesn't zero anything out. It's that yeah. full 64 gig image. And that, that can be a problem. That can definitely be a problem. Now I know you can manually go in. You can do, you could remove the, you know, with a free space, resize it. And when you put that image on, you can re-expand like it. When you start doing that more than once, you're like, <laughs> I need to automate this. I need to yeah. find a way to make this work without all the manual intervention as, as people do. Now, in my advanced age, I've gotten to the point of going, before you do that, go see if anybody else has run into this and made the tool for you so you don't spend, you know, it's like four hours later, hey, I have a working solution that is inferior to the one this other person created five years ago. Yes, true story. So that's what I did. I, I went looking around and I came Hi. across PyShrink. It's cool. a bash script and it gets the job done. Oh man, this is the, <laughs> the way for me, hands down here in the studio, to shrink images. I mean, it, you just DD an SD card, you feed that image to PyShrink and let it go to work. It's going to zero out all your empty space. It's going to compress the image. And the thing that sold me on this, this will set up the image. So no matter what size SD card, you know, if I have, I could use my hands for the podcast listeners. So cut your audio up extra high so you can see my hands waving around. Mm-hmm. It, so you got that 64 gig card, you get three gigs on it. And you're like, all right, that's cool. Whatever you make the image, you get it compressed. It's like one gig, two gig, you know, 1.2 gigs or something like that. Then you're like, I just got 128 gig SD card. So you run it through a pie shrink when you put it on there and you boot it for the first time it'll expand for the full 128 gigs without you having to do anything but if you're ddng anything run it through this mm-hmm. this mm-hmm. is just going to save you the time all right really bye. nice 
running a little bit long. But mm-hmm. before we get out of here, um, thanks, everybody. If you make the show possible, yeah. you know, if you're one of our Twitch subscribers, if you're one of the gorgeous people who fund the show over at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. We don't have one just for this show. It's all just kind of under one thing. And if you want all those links, head over to Linux Gamecast. Uh, of course, we have LibrePay, PayPal, Bitcoin, and we got Amazon Wishlist. If you want to pick us up something, we'd greatly appreciate it. And we have a merch store and humble affiliate links. But that lets us do the show each and every week. And to give you a podcast, mm. I host all that stuff myself, man. There's no tracking links. Nobody's mining your data. Everything's yeah. self-hosted. That ain't cheap. But uh, you guys make it possible. And I thank you very much for it. And as a bonus, as I was talking at the beginning of this show, what are we at right now? Here, let's confuse people. We are mm-hmm. at 38 minutes into this show. Just for the show oh. proper. We're not talking about the 20 minutes before and probably the 20 minutes after. Yeah. <laughs> 38 minutes into this show and you're listening, you're looking at, look at the time right now. It probably says something like 12. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. we keep the show short. The edited version is short, tight, fast, and efficient. Sure so is. if you want the ones yeah. where me and Jill act like regular old people and just ramble. <laughs> yeah, I get the unedited. Get, get the live and uncut version. We got you covered. And we put that in podcast format for you. Got a, you even get a custom RSS feed and you get the video version. I'll give you the video version of this show that you can download or just watch over at Patreon. Mm-hmm. It's a higher quality than you're going to get on YouTube. And uh, no commercials or anything like that. Just as a thanks. Because like, yeah. that means the world to me. And you get access to our show notes uh, if you are a Death Note or above. Which if you want to join in. Or if you just want to sit back and watch as we try to stick a show together throughout the week. You can do that as well. So there we go. Come check me out mm-hmm. on this Friday. Again, free. Open to everybody. RPG. Happy fun time. About 8.45 Eastern. And uh, it, we're going to try to make that a little bit of a thing. I even have a like hack together system for, to make it look like super good. And of course, Linux mm-hmm. Gamecast will be going down uh, 8.30. No, 8. Yeah, live at 8. Here on Twitch, longest running, biggest, baddest, bestest, baddest, desist <laughs> Linux gaming podcast. Been going on for 13, yes. 13 years. 13 years. Longer than Steam <laughs> has been on Linux, kids. Yes. You can't say we're just <laughs> showing up to try to get some attention. Oh, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, come check it out. Love to see you there. All right, Jill, time to Bye, roll those credits and thank all the people. Thank all the beautiful patrons. <laughs> Our advisors are Theron. We got the lovely Artharon in there. Our executive producers, 12345, Ian, Isha, KR Ducky, Drummer7, Chicago Kicks People, Turbo Tree Sloth, Glorious Agrol, Basil Empty, Caddy, K- Casey Clism, <laughs> Sea Monsters, Vera Tenuta, <laughs> Death Notes, Leonardo, Dodger, Kim, Chris, and our chairlings, uh, Mir, Steve, Steve, David. <laughs> And no, I can't read them all that quick. <laughs> so I try to every week and read some, a new name. <laughs> Me, Jill, and the nine blinking pumpkins. Yeah, yeah, you gotta go watch the video version. There's, there's been nine blinking pumpkins here this entire time. They've been very so cute. quiet. Yeah, very fun. We'll I love it you. that you put it on my side of the video too. Well, it did, you know, I, 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 I didn't want to cover up no. the um, <laughs> logo. It wouldn't really work, you know. Yeah, no, I know, I know. But no, it's too it's late. It's on my side now. Yes, me and my husband got married in October. <laughs> Sounds like a personal problem, Jill. Good night, everybody. See you Night, next everyone. Week. Love you all. <laughs>